what's up everybody wwe hall of famer the godfather here and you're watching grown man record night so let's everybody get aggressive and get on the ho train hey we we got you in there steve yeah yeah you there yeah i'm here i think we got it yeah, 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 yeah. I think we got it squared away. But uh, hit the whole train. You uh, are you taking any um, are you taking any time off for Memorial Day? No. No, not at all. I think it's gonna no. be my first time off for the year. Um, okay. I mean, I wasn't going to. Um. I mean, especially with everything going on, I wasn't going to go, like, visit my parents or anything. But, like, um... <laughs> uh... But my mom promised me if I come over and visit, she was going to make me some eggs Benedict. Me if I come over and visit, she was going to make me some eggs Benedict. So I'm thinking I may actually go home for the holidays. Music's loud. Boom! Hey! Oh, you're you're blowing out, Steve. You're blowing out. Blowing out. Easy, easy. All right then. All right. Hey, everybody! Welcome to Grown Man Record Night. Let us know off the top what's everything what's everything sounding like. Sounds good to me. Does it? Everything's everything's working out. Vance is in here, Chicago, checking in, baby, baby. Got the got the uh, yeah. cameraman in here, Metal Delosion. Aaron Griffin, Mempho, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm seeing Scotty Strychnine. I'm seeing all Michael Cron. Michael Cron's birthday's tomorrow. Come on, everybody. Wow. Come on, everybody. C -c Come on, everybody. You guys into Job Bunny or what? Jay Mick. Ooh -wee. Let's go. What's Steve? What's what's he doing? There's a delay between Twitch, YouTube, and that other. Other than that, sounds good. Switch. Okay, cool. All right. Hope everybody's been hanging in there and doing their thing over this. Uh, these uncertain times. Uh, we have. Uh, I don't know what it's going on in your state. Um, here in North Carolina, they've opened up phase one of the whatever. Uh, so non-essential businesses can be open and stuff, and that kind of lead—I mean, that kind of leads me to my initial thought here was: last Saturday, Steve hit me up and said he was going to one of our local record places, Ed McKay's. You guys are McKay's. You guys have McKay's some around the way. Um, that uh, you went out and like look for records. Yeah, I did. I actually. Uh spent the remaining uh, bit of my trade credit and I'm glad because people ain't nobody's observing w rules that they need to observe there's no rules but you know they're gonna let you know there's right. no fucking rules were you were you weird in there like what uh... no because I got in there early my wife and daughter went later in the day and she said it was a freaking she was like nobody it was bullshit but I, I went in there with a goal there was something I wanted and I got it huh uh, that I looked at before, like in mid March, I was thinking about getting in it, but I was like, nah, I'll wait and see if, you know, what else. But so I got this piece of equipment plus some records. So, so you were kind of like wait, waiting for this. I mean, I'd be, I'm still a little, eh, I don't know. I don't know if I'd be like lined up when they open kind of thing to get in there. I'm curious what everybody else's plan is going to be. So leave us a comment, like in the chat here. 
or if you're watching this on YouTube, um, when do you plan on actually going back to your like local record spots and like getting in there and like you know going through the records? Because those are those are mostly little places though. It's true, but I even thought about when we had 2021. <laughs> I mean, that's not. I mean, I can see that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's uh, it, it, It'll take a while. And I know Underdog has decided to not open right away. They're going to wait a little bit. Uh, some of the other record stores are opening. But uh, but I even thought when, when Nate came up here, and it was like the week before all this shit really popped off, um, and we went to two local record stores, and we were all in there just like, that, 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 like through... And after the, after the fact, I thought about that. I was like, dude, we were like all up in everybody's. Yeah, I was like, man, I'm having trouble. You lick my lick my fingers so I can help go through these records. I like to get yeah, I like to make them all... stick so I hear that pop. <laughs> so when you hit a command record, it sticks to your finger. <laughs> all you command record fans that, will understand that, that joke. Okay. That nice shiny gleam. It'll stick to your finger. Oh, 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 there it is. Um. Yeah. Okay. Van says he's ready to go back when they when they open because he's going through withdrawal. Is it still a lockdown in Chicago, Vance? Just curious. Mike Cron said he's, they're capping the number of people inside. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm happy being able to have sons of bitches deli- deliver stuff to my door. And I did get a nice delivery from Jonathan from Underdog last Saturday uh, and spent about 30 minutes in the yard to me and the fiance just hanging out chatting um, and uh, talking nonsense did you did you tell him hey my, my show was last night by the way just to let you know yeah I mean no big deal but uh, you really let me down <laughs> actually I was so hung over or whatever it is that I get nowadays uh, cardiac arrested uh, whatever it is that uh, I was laying here just like kind of tongue out and then I get a message hey i'm gonna be at your place in about 25 minutes and i was like i thought it was my cousin jonathan from texas <laughs> and i'm like bro you i almost was about to text you better fucking not be i'm gonna tell you, <laughs> i'm i'm out right now but then i'm like oh wait a minute wait whoa, whoa, whoa it's jonathan from i did order some records so wait a minute um so anyway i i got to hang out got some records actually ordered a record so we got some of that stuff coming up in dig of the week Steve, you got some stuff from Dig of the Week, so stuff you picked up locally and some stuff you ordered? Yeah. Is that right? No, no, no. no nothing I ordered. Okay. Miss Nomer. That's a Miss Nomer. I think I've got something I ordered next week. Gotcha. Roger that. Be sure you're following us on the socials, folks, to know when we go live and when we're uh, doing our shit. And we love to interact with you and hang out. Uh, Discord has been really popping off lately, folks, sharing a lot of those stuff they've been picking up aaron griffin's had a our top shots had a huge cache of records come in that's been really fun to see him pick stuff up a lot of people picking up some nice stuff and posting it in the discord if you want a link to it just hit hit me up i'll give you a, a, an a updated link for that if you've not fucked with discord before it's got like an like old school chat room it's just like an on it's like the chat here in record night except it goes on for like all week long and you can ask questions and post recipes and funny stuff and it's just a good time man it's where we're all just kind of getting together and hanging out you know i need to get back to listening to the playlist where's where can i find the playlist again playlist you can do a uh let me do a command because that was some good time playlist boom fuck spirit okay vance he said, "Go and get, <laughs> go and get that out of the way." If you, if you're a Spo- let's get started early. Here. <laughs> if you're a Spotify person, click that link. There's a Grown Man Record Night playlist. That's like all the vinyl stuff that we play here on the show. It's not just stuff we like, but it's stuff we actually own on vinyl between the three of us, uh, compiled into this uh, Spotify playlist. So if you're on the road, you got to do a little road trip. That's like a it's it's great, and I know it's our own stuff, and so it's but it's funny. I hit shuffle. I mean, because. You have to hit shuffle on Spotify, and because uh, I'm not paying for premium, Pfft, get the fuck out of here. So you hit that stuff, and I'm just like, man, what a great! I go from like Cannonball Adderley to Black Flag to, and I'm like to Buck Owens, and I'm like, 
that's such a great mix. And I'm like, yeah, because it's record night, and that's exactly what we do. We, I'm sure we've made those th those three records in a row before. You know what I mean? So it's a great it's a, it's a great playlist. So check that out if you're interested in that. Get into here and da 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 da. But yeah, I, I was curious to see, man. It's it, that's a good. I mean, not just for record stores, but like. Uh, just kind of going out in general i mean i'm not a going out kind of guy so it's hard for me to like judge what regular people would do because i don't ever want to leave my house ever again as long as i live oh i already see people typing if you guys want some marbles i do have marbles queued up so we can jump into some marbles here in a little bit let us take care of some housekeeping stuff and then we'll get into it everybody get a grip everybody get a grip you're crazy about the marbles Marbles is a good time. We're actually playing out for the first time. We, well, we we've run a lot of uh, Nintendo emulator stuff on the on the stream here uh, recently, and tonight for the first time ran some Super Nintendo stuff. Played some Final Fight for a long time. Um, some good stuff, man. Oh, a little Marble League. We get some uniforms made. Some nice satin jackets. <laughs> you guys like fucking satin jackets? You better. <laughs> that's all I got to say you better because I love a satin jacket with a nice crisp pair of dress pants freshly ironed I bet, I nice bet your dad, I bet your dad had one. Oh, my dad that's that's where I'm actually getting that from my dad was the Sansabelt slack white dress shirt black satin jacket over top of it and probably a blade and a 38 in the pocket nice yeah so sort of business I've never seen my dad wear blue jeans in my entire life, ever, ever. A bit business that involves a foot in your ass. My dad is not a jeans guy. Ooh, a captain's hat. I want a captain's hat. Yeah, Steve, what's up, uh, Zonk Man? Oh, I thought I thought I saw the Zonk Man. I'm sorry. Golly. It's not the Zonk Man. It's Vance. I always get Vance and the Zonk Man's names confused. I just see Z's, and I jump to conclusions. And I, I need to jump to conclusions, Matt. All right. Um, so, unfortunately, ac according to uh, Metal Theologian, this is the show you tune into to find out who the hell died this week. This uh, is like yeah, the yeah. dying show. So, yeah. unfortunately, we have to say that uh, this week... Just, we lost a local. Who, who's a local? Uh, that jazz singer, um, Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> no. Hell, hell of a man. No, I'll, no. I'll get back. To, I'll get back to you on that. Okay. Well, come, right, come back to me. I don't give a shit about him then. I don't know who he is. It's a woman. Okay. You should give a shit. She was a wonderful, uh, jazz Spe singer. Speaking of women, um, little Richard rest in peace. Let me tell you what, I have uh, I've grown more and more fond of Little Richard as time has moved on. It's kind of kitschy, like growing up. I thought of him as a kind of a, I, I don't know, just kind of a novelty type act. Man, he was so legit. Huh? Carl Perkins? What? Blue suede shoes guy? Elvis? Parsons? It's, it's wavy. It's wavy gravy's birthday, by the way. Who's wavy gravy? A dude from you know he 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 organized all the security at, at Woodstock. Oh yeah. He's like a hippie counterculture guy. But uh, you know we played a I played a uh, Little Richard album late in the set tonight, and if if you know of a better Little Richard album, I'd be I would love to hear it because this thing absolutely smokes. But it's funny I I love a guy that like this that's uh, performance art soulful rock and roll early r&b kind of stuff but it very original for the time and a lot of people and i didn't really realize this until he croaked like uh, a lot of very influential uh musicians coming out of the woodworks talking about what a big influence and a big a big part of music history little richard actually was um and that's a fearless performer and a gifted musician is kind of what's said over and over again and I love the fact that he would tell 
he would tell other people that he was kind of one of the pioneers and like the <laughs> the um, uh, big stalwarts behind inventing rock and roll. And I love somebody that grabs some shit like that and owns it. It's like, yeah, that's right. I'm the one. I'm the dude. This is the guy you want to talk to right here. Number one. Uh, so anyway, rip. But usually, usually you kind of don't give respect to people who credit themselves. But in this case... Yeah, I mean, he deserves the credit. It, it takes a certain kind of person to pull off that kind of bravado. If you're doing right. it, doing it in a douchey way, it's immediately recognizable. But somehow, other people that do it, and I know it's a persona, but like Ric Flair, who just kind of, you know, I mean, I know that's fake, but it's kind of not because he's kind of like that in real life. I love shit like that. You know, my, my dad's like that. I remember my, my mom fixing my dad's tie, like going to work, and my mom saying, that shirt looks really good on you. And, and my dad said, I know. Like that, I love that. <laughs> I've always loved that shit. But anyway, what's going on, Bo? Earhead 6 making an appearance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let's go on. What's up? You know, speaking of our Discord, Shane the Mod, if he's still awake, Shane, you still in here? He said he was falling asleep in his uh, chair earlier. Damn. But, uh, and I get it. I get it. He was talking about uh, something that's coming out, like, uh, here in a little bit. The closer reissue of uh, Joy Division. I still need to pick up the, the first Joy Division. This is their, what, second record, I believe? The 40th anniversary uh, of the 1980 album. Um, not a, it's gonna it's got a 40th anniversary edition of Closer. It's got non-album singles, Transmission, and Atmosphere. I think those came out on like uh, seven inches back in the day. And Love Will Tell Us Apart also been released on separate 12 inches with their original B sides. This is the first re-release since uh, Factory Records closed in '92. I guess of those uh, hidden tracks and shit. Pretty cool. I still need to pick up. Uh, yeah, yeah, second. I still need to pick up the first one, uh, which I, I, I don't know the second one as much as I know the first one. But um, I like all that shit. I think it's pretty good. I, I like them more and more as, as time moves on. Time marches on. Are you a Joy Division guy, Steve? You like them? No. You don't like Joy Division? No, not really. What? I haven't. Really listen to him much? Okay, go back and listen to the go back and listen to the first one. I'm telling you, the one with the mountains on it, right? Okay, I know we got some folks in here that are big uh, Cramps fans. That's a big. Uh, was there anything else I was supposed to show for? I, I feel like I jumped the gun here. Anyway, um, the woman who died was Melva Houston. She was a local. Jazz, but she was internationally known gospel, blues, and jazz singer. Hmm. So there you go. Did she also invent the toast? Melva toast? Melva, Melva toast. Is that nice. disrespectful? Not at all. Okay. We're moving on. Um, hey, Metal Theologian said he's got your back. He's like, yeah, Joy Division sucks. No, no, no. No, he said, fuck Joy Division. All I can say is Henry Rollins says it's the, one of the most important. It's one of the best albums of all time. Is the first one. Okay. I think they're sound waves on the first one. Oh, sound waves. Okay, not mountains. Really? I've always thought of that as mountains. You're probably right though. That probably makes more sense. Bo. That's mm -hmm. uh, probably makes more sense. But I know we got some uh, fans of the Cramps. That's a big. That's a vein that runs through the. Uh, VC pretty strong. The first Cramps record, which you know I've never really ran into, um, "Songs of Lore Taught Me," is um, I guess it's been re-released a couple of times or a few times back, but it's I've not seen it recently. Um, originally in '80 on IRS, this is on. Do I have a? Uh, okay, never mind. I thought I had a label for this but uh, this is getting re-released i would love to pick up that first 
because most of the cramp stuff that I see, that the reissues and stuff that are bouncing around, is uh, they're they're uh, like a lot of live albums and stuff, which are good, but I'm not a big live album guy. So I want to get cramp stuff, but I struggle to find, uh, especially coming in as a newer cramps fan, I struggle to find uh, the best cramp stuff to spend my money on. I guess. I mean, do you, do you go for the seven inches? Is that the best stuff? Is there a good best of? Or like, I mean, I'm not trying to be a completionist or anything. Um, but I don't want to buy some janky live recording where it sounds like somebody beating on a trash can either. I mean, I have too much of a discerning ear for that. Um, but anyway. 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 What, 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 what else? What else? What else? What else? I'll check this out. I found this. This is coming out. Um, this came out today. That cramps came out today. That was kind of the point of this. You ever heard of this band Guru Guru, Steve? No. Oh, dude. This is right up your alley. And speaking of Metal Theologian, this is a Svart. Uh, that's what caught my attention. Look at the quality of this image, by the way. That's a pretty, pretty nice image. This is a Svart Mondo release, black vinyl, 500 copies. Jesus. Stunning quality, rare live performance recordings of Kraut Rock Pioneer's Guru Guru from one of their earliest ever live recorded concerts from 1970. Three long slabs of prime classic psychedelic prog, Steve. Two from the mm. UFO album and one off Hinton show the band at their apex, defining a sound that's never been heard before sourced from tapes recorded directly from the sound deck of the show uh the recording quality is phenomenal for something this vintage era this is some pretty pretty cool stuff um i gave a little quick sample to this i don't really know shit about these guys but dude this is right up your buddy hoyle i'm telling you guru guru yeah yeah first two cramps are the best okay all right what's up mervin griff I, fig I figured some folks would know about uh, Guru Guru. That's one of those that may be worth picking up, man. Or at least doing a little more research. Of course, probably as soon as it went on sale, it's probably out of print. I mean, it's, you know, let's be awesome. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, let's be awesome. Everybody, let's be awesome. All right. What's up, Marvin Griff? I can hear that through your mic, Steve. Okay. I think we call that talk back in the business. Yeah. That's your, uh, here's kind of a, uh, here's kind of a wild card, uh, for things that came out today. Boom. Mandroid gift of dreams. This is a 1983 synth pop group. It's like synth pop makes funk soul from the seventies. They call it a captivating musical cocktail. You could sit and listen, or you can dance along. It's got it. I jammed this, dude. This has record night written all over it. It totally, totally does. Um, it's it's very electro-ish, but still like funky as hell. Like you know, like Parliament or Funkadelic or something like that. But like very synthy, like uh, '80s stuff. So I'm gonna be checking this more out. As if it's it's a little. It was a, it was a thirty dollar record. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Mandroid Gift of Dreams. Interested if any of you guys are familiar with this, I'm going to check out more of it. I really enjoyed the stuff that I listened to. Uh, let's get into a little more uh, metal kind of stuff. Now, I'm familiar with this group. I never really sat down and listened to it. Boom. Probot, which is a um, Dave Grohl's project from like the early 2000s. Like really heavy shit. But he brought in all these, um, I think he recorded all the instrumentals, but then he brought in uh, all these different singers. And like, when I say different singers, I mean like um, Lemmy's on this, Max Cavalera, King Diamond, Tom Warrior, all on this shit. Uh, and that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg. And I listened to it today, it's pretty damn good, man. And I think they've had some reissues, but it's been a little sporadic. It may have been a couple, couple, three, four years since the last time they've had a reissue of this. But it's a pretty damn good, good record. Um, 
but yeah, it's um, if you guys don't know Probot, check it out. At least give it a little streamy, give it a little streamy action. Check out Guru Guru Kanguru. Okay. The Voivod one was good. Oh, they have like the singer from Voivods on there. I know you're a Voivod guy. Yeah. What's up, Steve Bender? There's Steve Bender. I knew he'd be in here. I mentioned your name earlier by accident, but I, I, I knew you'd be here. That's why I did it. Um, Mr. Bizarro, Bill Dance for President. My man. My man, my man. What's going on, dude? <laughs> man, what a... Is there a better guy ever in the history of America than, than Bill Dance, for Christ's sakes? <laughs> uh, Probot was awesome back in the day before Dave Grohl started getting on my damn nerves. Dave Grohl gets on your nerves, man? Really? Okay. Chasing the Classics getting in here. What's going on, Brad? Stoked to have seen some new content from Chasing the Classics this past week. I was really excited to see that. Sit down with a nice little cocktail and enjoy that motherfucker. Don Crom stepping in here. Come on now. But we're getting, it's, we're getting loose. Everybody's getting loosened up. It's a crowd. Everybody's, six feet, six feet, everybody. Oof. Everybody, st stretch them out real quick. Let's get it all loosened up before we get in here and get... All right, come on now. Michael Cron, not a Dave Grohl fan? Okay. You guys, I think you guys need to get a grip real quick. Hey, everybody's got a thing. Uh, no, yeah, but some people's things are wrong, Steve. That's the bottom line of this. Some people <laughs> have things and their things are wrong. Wrong thing. Um, do we have any other new business we yeah, need to get I'd to? Yeah, I'd like to mention a couple of things. Let's mention some if, stuff. If you don't mind. Well, um... Uh, I will say first off that today's the 50th anniversary of the release of In the Wake of Poseidon. Oh. Which is King Crimson's uh, right soft, sophomore album, shall we say. You know, the band was fractured. There was really no band. It was just Robert Fripp. And uh, Peter Sinfield was just learning to kind of twiddle on some keyboards. He didn't play anything on this album, but, you know, he, he wrote a lot of the songs. They asked Greg Lake to come back to sing because he'd gone to ELP, but ELP hadn't really taken off yet. So he actually came back with the promise. He was paid with the King Crimson's uh, PA equipment. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, and the brothers got the Giles brothers. I think it was Peter and Michael. They had played with, there used to be a band called Giles, Giles and Fripp before King Crimson. And... Michael Giles played on the first album, and he came back to play drums with his brother, joining him on bass on the on in the core of the or uh, in the wake of Poseidon. So, you know, but that was their highest. That was their highest charting out to to date. I think it's their highest charting album in the UK. Really, with number four. Tell me, have you gone back and downloaded any of that um, that Robert Fripp stuff that he's releasing uh, every week or whatever? No, I. I think I have some of it already. Some of the ambient so, stuff. Yeah, the ambient stuff. It's, it's like music for churches or whatever. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's. I might have some of it, but there's there's a ton of it out there. There's yeah, a lot of it out there. Um, but no, I haven't I haven't done that. I listened to some of it. You know, speaking of watching, not to not to interrupt, but I'm interrupting. Um, still been watching a bunch of documentaries on uh, on like Amazon Prime and shit. I watched a great L7 documentary on Prime. Really enjoyed that. Um, what else I watched? Oh, a, a documentary about the uh, uh, Cuckoo's Nest, the uh, the punk club in Orange County. Uh, yeah. yeah, watch that today. Speaking of anyway. speaking of documentaries, yes. I was gonna I was gonna mention um, a trailer came out today. I don't know when it's coming out, but there's a documentary coming out about IRS records called oh. uh, "We Were Once Rebels." Uh, and, you know, IRS was like the coolest label in oh, the yeah. 80s. Um, talking about R.E.M., Go-Go's, Oingo Boingo. English Joy Division. Beat, we were just talking Concrete, about that. Blonde, Buzzcocks, Fine Young Cannibals, a lot of other bands. So they, they kind of had a really cool, like, niche, and then they became really somewhat big, and then kind of just got devoured by themselves, basically, you know, when bands would jump and go to Warner Brothers or whatever, so... 
I've got a, the, my one example is I've got a record by a band called Timbuktu. Do you know Timbuktu? Yeah, I do. They had like, they had like one hit. I bought that solely for the fact that they were on IRS records. That's the only reason I bought that. It's a, it's a cool looking label. Yeah. And it had a donkey on the cover and I figured, you know, I think I've got uh, English beat and of course, REM early records. And, uh, even that, uh, record I showed, uh, couple last week maybe uh the the bears uh it's um uh adrian Ballou's local band basically yeah. it's it's on irs records oh no i'll say it must have been later irs i said because they started 79 i said joy division earlier not joy division that first cramps record that was irs that we talked about earlier okay. yeah yeah that's cool. all I wanted to talk. That was, those were the two things I wanted to bring up. But I don't know when it's coming out. I just there's a really cool trailer out there worth watching though. To, to check it out if you get a chance. How's you, how's the uh, the Beyond the Mask compilation thing going on? Um, well, it's kind of it's kind of stalling a little bit right now. Okay. So I, I spent this week trying to get the word out a little bit. I've I, I've got a a list of people to reach out to, um, but uh, I, I went on radio Monday. With a local station WTOB, and we we covered a few a few of the songs and talked about the album. And they're so stoked about it. We're going to do a part two. And we're going to talk about some more songs. Uh, month, it's an hour show on WTOB. Cool. You can stream it on WTOB.com. But uh, and then today I, I did an interview with uh, uh, WXII. Ha -ha. Oh, go get it. Um, but, it, you know, it was harder than I thought. Not than I thought. No way than I thought. But it, it was harder than you think for me to get an interview with WXII. So, um, I'm posting a link in the chat right now. I ended up not being the one they, they showed on the air. and they, I, really? will, I will say this, hopefully not getting in trouble, but they kind of screwed up the story a little bit. Cause... No. <laughs> no way. <laughs> but um, I did ask the photographer... If I could get the raw because I I think I can do something with it so but uh yeah it's it's it, you know it's going I think we've we crossed the $500 threshold I'm just, I'm just hoping to get a little more out, out of this project before I just agree to do a volume two you, you know <clears throat> you know we read I mean not to put any pressure but we raised 500 here on record night for uh, gamers outreach I hear you in, in, in one night so <laughs> I mean and I will say something interesting that uh, someone else uh, that's attached to the group, it's called the Virtual Village. It's a bunch of artists, not just musicians, graphic artists and others. Um, they're also, they just said, hey, you know, singers and songwriters have, have done this, but some of us uh, drummers want to do something. So they're going to do this like, I think it's two or three days straight. It's called drum roll, mm. where they bring in a drummer and he, he solos for like 20 minutes and then it, it trades off to another drummer and they do this for like two or three days straight to try to raise money. Wow, <laughs> so holy lord. That should be interesting. I'd, I really would hope that um, our local king of the drums, Mitch Hull, would take part in this because I would, I, would, I would listen to him for, for hours. Um, he's that amazing drummer up in... Um, Walnut cut? No, not Walnut. Oh, the guy from uh, Soften the Glare. Yes, yes. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. If you've never heard Soften the Glare, folks, look up so uh, Ryan Martini from Mudvayne is the bass player. It's like a prog band that's like heavy prog. But, oh, it's really good. It's very oh jazz Lord. prog. It's Woo. really, really good. Uh, Horsepin Creek Road. You got it, Aaron. Um, what the hell was I going to say? What are you drinking? Oh, just some natural light. I'm keeping it nice and easy. I decided to go Sweetwater Going Coastal IPA with pineapple. Oh, those are fantastic. I've never seen it in the bottles. I've only seen it in the cans, actually. Those are terrific. I love those. What do, what do you think yeah, about right, them? Right before the show, I realized I only had two beers, so I had to run to the store. Oh, I love it. It's really good. It's, it's kind of getting you geared up for the summer to come, you know. Summer, summer, summer time. Look. So you said you're taking some time off? I'm off Thursday and Friday this week, and, you know, then we're off for Memorial Day on Monday. Memorial Day? Memor Memorial Day. I'm going to Carl Carl back about World War III. <laughs> but, and over Memorial Day, this vacation is when I will watch Summer Rental, as you guys all know. Is, 
Is Carl going to take his longboard with him on the boat? He's it probably. He's probably got a overstock supply of longboards and two liters. I'm assuming. <laughs> I'm just assuming. Um, should we get into a little bit of what we played? Sure, why not? Should I sting us into it as a transition? Why don't I sting us into the, what we played? <laughs> Boom. Should I sting us back out of it? I'm probably thinking we probably should do that. So, anyway. Okay. Well, uh, okay. Oh, sorry. Got to get rid of the stinger. All right, boom. Um, started out this evening. I actually made a little list this week. Um, I had a little, little more time than normal, but especially being around my records as I'm thinking of it. Um, of things I wanted to play during the show. And so I actually jotted a couple of stuff down. Maybe what I, what I like to do is like yank a record out, you know, like a little, you know, pull it a little like this. And so when I walk past it, I'm like, Hey, what's this record doing sticking out? And I'm like, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Where I was going to play this on the show. So I started doing that this week a little bit, uh, just trying to prepare a little bit, but to start us off, this was, um, we mentioned and uh, appreciate the feedback on uh, discord uh mike cron left a comment he really enjoyed the uh like what we did last week my chair is sinking it's driving me nuts <laughs> i don't like that uh really like the dig of the week segment last week which was not about brand new records but more about stuff that was already in our collections and had like a theme it was like really really would like to see um more of that kind of stuff and i agree i think that's a that's a great way to do and so come up with a little something uh especially if we don't have new records come up with something new to show or a theme that's maybe a little bit off the beaten path i don't want to hear what's your what's your uh what's your what's your desert island albums <laughs> if you're a strand on another island Oh, the only records you can t- <laughs> That's fucking cornball, and everybody's done that. I don't want to do that. Uh, so it's, it's it. we have to find a different way to, uh, to attack it and, and come, at a, come at shit with a different angle. And so I've got some ideas. It's been cooking around, knocking around the old cooking box, the old, uh, the old broom handle uh, storage unit up here. And um, so, so we'll do that. But anyway, last week's um, was uh, records that we kind of were really into and collected the shit piss out of for a long time, and then we just stopped. And one of the things we pulled out was uh, Jean-Luc Ponty's Cosmic Messenger, or just Ponty in general. This record is a smoker. Not all of Ponty's stuff is fantastic. This record, fantastic. Everybody should own this record. It's cheap. It's groovy. It's very musical. Very. Man, this is awesome. This is a dollar record all to, all day long. I probably got eight or nine Pawnee records, of varying degrees degrees of uh, awesomeness. This would probably be numero uno. I'm probably gonna say. So if you're interested in checking out Pawnee, that's the one. Some of it's a little. Yeah, it's still good, but I mean it's that but that's a good one i don't know why this popped in my head this week he, he played he played with return to forever i believe he was in return to forever he was with the mahavishnu orchestra i think he played with zappa also at some yeah. point one of the mothers of invention he, he's something. been around the block in terms of like he was one of those guys that uh for that kind of nonsense he was one of the guys you reached out to immediately um if you wanted to take your album to the next level in that if era. You're, if you're a fusion player and you need a good violinist. Yeah, he was the guy. He's, I mean, he's the guy. Who else is there? I mean, there's probably some other guys, but Pawnee would be number one. This just kind of jumped into my... This was a bustle in my hedgerow this week that just kind of popped in there. I don't I don't know why... Zappa hated him. <laughs> he, could, <laughs> he seems like he would be a little pretentious. Alice Cooper's Killer. Now, for the longest time, I hated on Alice Cooper 
so long. I would never own an Alice Cooper record. I, I thought Alice Cooper was the most cornball shit. And I think Jay and Steve both told me, but dude, Killer is a great record. And I'm like, yeah, okay, right. And you got to hear the Bon Scott records too, right? <laughs> but when I actually picked this one up, this is a good record. I really enjoy this record. I can't believe I'm like... I just saw a J-Wipe. That was a J-Wipe. <laughs> he went running outside. I think he's throwing up. But yeah, it's uh, this is this is a great... This is a great record. I don't know if I like all Alice Cooper stuff, and I'm certainly no aficionado on his material, but this killer record, where's this fall, Steve? I don't know. No? All right. I think Jay's the one that's like, dude, you got to get this one. Somebody else is going to know. Aaron says he's pulling a Steve and peeing outside. Yeah, Jay always pees outside. Um, play it fourth record that's the fourth alice cooper you were real quick on that are you an alice cooper guy metal delusion you were real quick on that i wish you guys would play more disco who said that who because i did i played the little heat wave too hot to handle a great compilation that's funky as hell it's really funky but it's a disco record i mean let's let's be honest 1977 on CBS. Uh, and this side, Too Hot to Handle, Boogie Nights. And oh, my, yeah. my jam, Ain't No Half Stepping. Ain't No Half Stepping is a jam in that song. Man, this, this, this is, I've had this a long, long time. Great cover. And it's a terrific record. It, it, it just, it's one of those, you know, we talked about that in the first contest to keep the party moving. That's a keep the party moving record all day long, whether you like disco or not. Um, he says he's not like he used to be. Okay, all right. His first couple might change your mind. Okay, I see that, and that's what I—that's what I've heard. Like the Alice Cooper's got some stuff that's actually legit. Um, but yeah, and then we got one for the birthday boy. Michael Cron made a request that was up for a. Uh, Cavalcades, Sonic Euthanasia, which was a record he sent us that one of us, either me or Steve, uh, misfiled under the album title as opposed to the artist. This is, uh, oh my God. This is so damn good. It's, um, it's like blackened death metal mixed with prog and i know of michael cron if you're still in here and hadn't passed out yet i know i've asked you about this uh before but tell us a little bit more about this this is this is so good man metal theologian you would love this record man if you've not heard this bermuda mohawk productions they're from michigan okay so kick-ass man it, it kind of covers a lot of different genres if you will um but really good yeah it, it's not he of course it's heavy i mean it's heavy it's not it's not brutal brutal heavy but it's, jay immediately said this is scary when, <laughs> when we turned on the first song he was like this is scary and i think he went outside um whoo baby this is, you know, we've mentioned, I mentioned this on the, one of the podcasts, either Greeno or uh, Mr. Bizarro's, the grown man record night rule of picking up jazz records that you don't know <clears throat> shit about. Everybody knows it. If it has an African-American gentleman smoking a cigarette on the black and white photo, you, you pick it up. And literally, literally what that was based off of Two Feet in the Gutter, the Dave Bailey Quintet. And look, there's his dork right there. Don't get it mistaken. That's his dork. That's his black man dork right there. Um, but I picked, I saw this cover, and I'm like, wow, that's, I had no idea. I, I didn't have a, much of a collection. It's like, um, I don't know who this guy is, but uh, th this looks neat. What label is this on? Epic, okay. Epic Jazz Series. 
then I go over to the back here and this picture, that's what sold me. Black and white cat hanging out leisurely as fuck, having them a little burning a little heater right there. That's that's it. That's why I bought this record. And it's one of my favorite jazz records of all time. It really is. And one of my favorite things to play here on the show. It, it's it's so good, man. Um, but I, the standout tracks, I think, would be the title track, Two Feet in the Gutter, and Coffee Walk, which is a great title for a song. Coffee Walk. Because you can just imagine what a jazz song called Coffee Walk would sound like. You know what I mean? Um, something I added to the list earlier this week. I think we played... We played some of this um, a little recently, but I haven't played this one in a long time. The Animals, um, Animalism. Love the Animals and Eric Burden. I think Eric Burden's got one of the one of the best voices for rock and roll, the classic rock and roll voices. I can't think of. I think he's better than Mick Jagger by far. I think he's better than all those guys, all the British Invasion guys. Eric Burden has the best voice of anybody. Hands down, in my opinion. But um, this is, a, I don't know where this falls exactly. I kind of forgot I had this, to be honest with you. But we listened to Side One, um, which had a little All Night Long, The Other Side of Life, Smokestack Lightning, Loose Seals in there. But anyway, I love some Eric Burden. Wish I, I should have looked up the year of that. But, they, they, I mean, God, they released like four albums a year for there for a while, for Christ's sake. So it's, this was um, one of the, uh, what documentary was I watching? I Need That Record, I think. Um, I'm sure you, most of you guys have seen that documentary. Um, they were interviewing the guy from um, Talking Heads, and I can't remember the guy's name. It's like Talking Heads, and said Slash Tom Tom Club. And I'm like, one of the dudes from Talking Heads played in Tom Tom Club? That would be uh, Jerry Harrison. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and I didn't. I don't think I realized that. And I'm like, I've got that record, and um, not had it too long, like about a year. It, this is trippy, man. This is a trippy damn record, and it's really good. I really enjoy this record. Um, that's a little surprising. That animalism's from 1966. 66. Okay. That's right in the middle of all that just meat and potatoes of the animals. So many records. I wonder how many studio albums they released. I have th three albums of theirs from 1966. So. <laughs> exactly. That's my point right there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, this... Uh, this Tom Toms, man. This is good shit, man. I really enjoyed this. This was a Goodwill pickup for me. This is from 81. I didn't realize it was this early, to be honest with you. But um, really good stuff, man. Really, really enjoyed that. And then, does, Rip, does Adrian Ballou play on that album? Let me take a look for you, Steve. I'll look at the back of it. I may have to put on my glasses about it. I'm an older gentleman, so I have to put on my glasses. Um, don't worry about it. Well, Sonny. I see here now. You want me to pull out the uh, the inside and look and see on there now? I don't. I don't see. I don't see it, Steve. I can't discern information like that right now. Um, and then, rip. This is the little Richard record I was talking about earlier. And let me tell you what, man. Holy Lord, this thing absolutely smokes. The roll thing. Includes Freedom Blues. This is on this is like a weird label, is it not? It doesn't even list the label. This is from 1970 Warner Brothers. This is a compilation. I don't know. I don't know. I've never seen this before. And I've always, you know, I love and respect Little Richard for what it is that he does. But more than that... Mm, this this record is so funky and so it, this is I, I can't imagine a better Little Richard record existing if, if you can only have one Little Richard record this is the one it is so damn good I'm telling you 
so funky and jammy and just makes you want to get up and dance. The real thing. Oh, yeah, what did I say? Yeah, I said uh, the roll thing. The real thing. R-I-L-L. Is this just a normal studio album? The real thing? Big old print. This big old print made me think that was an O, so I thought it was the roll thing. It's so damn good. Come on in, Jay. You want to come in and sit down? No, that's all right. Step on in it. Right in the middle. There you go, Jay. Get right in the middle of the camera shot. Appreciate that. Um, how about a little uh, hardcore punk rock-ish um, super group, I guess you would say, from 2014? Off. This was a Record Store Day thing, I think, that came out live from the BBC. Off is a, it's a band. I don't know why I took a stab on this, because I really didn't know shit about them when I picked it up. But this is... um. Oh, what's his name? Uh, the, the dude that was in Black Flag, uh, Morris. Um, Keith Morris Mo Day. Keith Morris. It's also got uh, Stephen McDonald, who played from, from Red Cross. We talked about Red Cross a week or two ago, and also with the Melvins. But uh, this is a kick-ass record, man. Especially for a live record. This, man, this really, it really picks them up and puts them down. Um really tight for a, <laughs> for a punk record. I, you know, I guess you'd call it punk. I don't know. But this is kind of a, considered a super group, I guess. Yeah, he's from the Circle Jerks and, uh, and Black Flag. I, th uh, he, I don't know what he did. If they always list him with the Circle Jerks and then like Black Flag, but I, I can't find what the hell it is he did with Black Flag and when it is he did it. But definitely Circle Jerks all day long. <laughs> um, and then to finish us off, it's really good, Scotty. That's a good one. Um, little, little Hank Jr. Whew. You can't have a little a beer bust here in North Carolina without a little Hank Jr. playing in the background. I think we look a little too similar for my flavor. What do you think there? Brothers mm. from another mother, say. But, uh... Yeah, growing up, if you were a cool kid, you were jamming some Hank Williams Jr. around here. Especially, you start getting a little beer buzz on you. That's something that just kind of feels feels right. He was the first singer before Henry Rollins. I thought that was that uh, the Mexican-y sounding guy. <clears throat> Keith Morris was the first singer? First Black Flag 45. Huh. And a country boy can survive. I think that's all That's all we had for Dig of the Week. Boom. That wasn't Dig of the Week. I mean, not Dig of the Week. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What we played. Three singers before Rollins. Interesting. Who's the guy I'm thinking of that was a, like a Latino guy? As we get... Uh, now's the time, folks. It's time to hit exclamation point. Play. Right in the chat. You guys want to get marble, a little marbles going? Marble time. It's marble time, baby. Exclamation point play. Get it in there. Aaron Griffin getting in there. Let's go. Yeah, Dez. Dez is the one I'm thinking about. Dez Cadena. Yeah, Dez. Dez is the one I'm thinking about. Yeah, that's my voice, Jay. I think I'll do a shot. I probably shouldn't do one. Should I do one with you, though? I'll do a shot for marbles. You shouldn't let me do it by myself. Okay. I've been having some cardiac issues. No, you're, you're good. But, uh, you I've know. got a couple of days to deal with that. If you're I gonna watch, You're going to watch NASCAR this weekend? Probably not. Oh, it's, oh that, we got some ambient sound. I think I got it cut off, but it's... Oh, maybe not. Just, this is a rainy marbles. See, see, the, see the rain? Exclamation point play if you want to get in get, on this. Get in there. The winner will get a picture of the... Uh, I'm going to split the head of my dick apart and take a picture of it. It looks like a like a puppet, like smiling. Sort, sort of. Come on, Jay. You can't be a pussy your whole life. 
All right. Everybody in? Ooh, we've got 11 people in this one. Good race. Here we go. It's, we're locked down. Locked down. Here we go. Starting Lock the race. Load. One. Go, everybody. Go. Go, 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 go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Restream bot. Oh, this is that one I don't like. I don't like this one. That's okay. Well, this is going down pretty quick. Before it took forever. Oh, Griffin wing. Top shot in number one position. Not anymore. Look at Mempho. Out in front. Way out in front. Let's see how far back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Michael Cron, the birthday boy. Trying to make a move. But look at Mempho pulling ahead here. Oh, my Lord. Okay. Oh, but wait. But wait. Michael Cron pulling ahead. Oh, but no, I'm sorry. Memphis still way ahead. Wow. Is this this much of a runaway game? How far back? Okay, Aaron Griffin coming real, real close. Real close. We got a tight race, folks. Oh, everybody's coming in. This is where the rubber meets the road right now. Right now. Aaron Griffin. Oh, look at this shot right here, folks. Through the air, during the storm, during the rain, he's off the board. He's off the board. Okay. Steve, you're off the board. Where are all these people? Liver lobes. Vance, you're off the board. Okay. Yeah. Everybody's just sailing off. Everybody's out. Liver lobes. <laughs> all of a sudden. Sneaking in from behind, you sneaky devil. How far back is the captain? Well, there's record, the girl man record nights in second place. If, if you can survive the jump, you got a good chance. Oh, but Liver Lobes is, oh, he's, and it's, did he, did Liver Lobes already make the jump? Finish here. I think, I think John's going to take it. The Tambronite. Let's get the official word. We'll wait for the official word, Jay. We won't speculate. We have computers set up for this. Boom. So we'll have computers. Yeah, liver yeah. lobes. Look at there now. Congratulations. All right. Let's see the final results. Let's see where everybody came in. Look at there. Okay, a lot of it. Look at these. Only two people finished? <laughs> guys. Hey, it's look. A hard, it's a hard course. Guys. I'm a little disappointed in everybody. Only two people finished out of the whole. I'm a little disappointed. Why is this all of a sudden? Redo. Maybe we'll redo this after Dig of the Week, but I, I'm, a, I'm a little disappointed. I got a little rabbit ridge going here. Going you, to... Maybe we'll get a, a new course. Yeah. That's, um, I think we need to try a little harder. That's that's pretty disappointing. Everybody take a knee. Let's take a knee and get in here real quick. Uh, how many things do you have for Dig of the Week? Where did your Dig of the Week stuff come from, Steve? It came from my uh, my adventure into hell uh, at uh, McKay's okay. on Saturday. So I think I did pose. Hang on, let me re, let me reset my hair here. I don't like uh, only like my hair being wrong. But uh, hold on, I'll be right back. I got I got to pick. I got to grab some. Okay. You know I'm gonna pee here in just a minute anyway. So I did pose the question on Discord because I think I have I have four digs. But these are uh, uncertain times. It's not a time of, in place where we can just go out and get records willy-nilly whenever we want, however we want. So I posed the question, um, would you guys like to see, like, when we get, like, a bunch of records, do you like just to blow through them and, like, show them all or kind of parse them out over a couple of weeks? And 
overwhelmingly they the the word was kind of space them out a little bit and i'm cool with that so um especially these are new records and you know cost a little bit of money so i'm not going to be probably buying any records in the next couple of weeks so I'm going to do two of my records tonight. I'm going to do two of them next week. So, and Steve, you're going to do, how many are you going to do tonight? I'm going to do three. Three. So that's, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. That's a fair, uh, right? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Who wants to start? You want to start or you want me to start? I'll, st I'll start with this so I can get it out of the way. Okay. Um, it's, it's not a record. It's what I was talking about Um can make, you hear me? Because I'm a little farther from the yeah, mic. Yeah, I'll make you bigger. It's okay. You don't. You can't. I guess you nope. can. It's fine. All Steve, um, all the time. So, uh, I saw this in mid March, and I thought, well, I kind of would like to have that, but I didn't get it. So when I went back, it was still there, and I thought, shit, I'll get it. And I'll just burn up the rest of my trade credit. It's a eight channel mixer for uh, Tascam M30. Uh, oh wow it's pretty, it's pretty sweet and uh I'm, I'm just looking i need to get a better a better sound from my home recordings and uh i think this will help me get that kind of warm sound that i'm looking for i did a lot of i looked up a lot of uh people's opinions and uh, they really like the m30 they it's, you know you're not going to get a digital sound but you're gonna get a nice warm sound with it so sure. um just kind of stoked on i haven't had a chance to play with it yet i've just been too busy but I'm hoping maybe this weekend I'll have some time to kind of just start tweaking with it, playing with it a little bit, and see you know seeing what I what kind of sounds I can get with it. So very cool. Yeah, but I may have to invest in a preamp for my uh, my microphone, which needs a uh, it needs a phantom power. Oh yeah yeah. You know I um Consuelo. Something I've been talking about, and this is kind of what uh, a couple of things that I picked up totally uh, fall into the category of I've been running my mouth about these records for so long, and they've been on my list for so long, and I continue to just not pick them up because when I go into the store to pick them up, they're, you know, reissues, I, or not, not reissues, either new records or reissues. I go into the store to pick them up, and there's a nice jazz record used or something you know and i'm so of course i'm going to pick that up because that's not going to be around very long so anyway this is something you guys have heard me talk about this band uh multiple times if you're a, been a friend of the program for any type of time uh and i didn't own any of it but i run my mouth to everybody else about picking it up for the longest time and Jonathan, even at Underdog, had even marked this down to a clearance item. And I still was kind of, I'm going to sneeze. He marked it down to a clearance item, and I still slept on it for the longest time. The fact that it was still around is pretty stupid. It was a fantastic record. That I've streamed multiple times. Boom! Here lies man. You will know nothing. This is the second record from Here Here Lies Man. Um, it's interesting because it's, it's called that because this is um, Herbie Mann's son is in this. So if you've never if you've never uh, heard me speak of this. Um, Noble Records, what's going on, man? You know I love some Rod and Easy shit, baby. Um, this is the second record. It's Herbie Man's Son. It's, they, they, they say it's like, imagine Afrobeat mixed with Black Sabbath. So the fuzziness, like fuzzy-ass Afrobeat Black Sabbath. It's like, are you kidding me? That's like, that's a dream come true. And they had the best album covers. I like the first album cover with the little uh, little African American boy on it more than this, but th the covers are fantastic. Hadn't listened to the third one as much, but this literally set an underdog records for. Ha have you seen it in there, Steve? I have. I have multiple, multiple times, and I just continued to like 
I'll get it one of these days. He had it for like 16 bucks, man. It was in the clearance section. In the wasn't clearance it? section. He, yeah. You can't get it offline for cheaper than like 20 And he had it for 16 and nobody ever picked it up. And I would go in there and I'm like, dude, I'm getting a record. And then all of a sudden, I, you know, of course I pick up whatever's used that's, you know, the hot shit that came in there that week or whatever. But, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, everything on Rod and Easy is great, man. I was I was telling uh, Dylan had a great uh, he's got a great relationship with the Rod and Easy guy. Did some great videos, um, with with the guy from Rod and Easy. And uh, I was telling him, Steve, how we picked up some used, not used. What the fuck's wrong with me? How we picked up some clearance stuff from Rod and Easy, and that you picked up that Spiny Norman record. Yeah. And that's uh, how good was that? Great, great. Just a, I think I pulled it up and I was like, "Hey, listen to this. You'd like this." And it was like a forty-five second, like just kind of head bob. And you're like, "Yeah, go go ahead and like pick that up for me." <laughs> it was it was that quick. So that's <laughs> that's how everything is on Rod and Easy. I could just Jay's done two blind uh, stabs. What do you do? What's what's the deal, Jay? For like twenty-five bucks, you get three records. Yeah, Jay's done that. Have you, have you done that twice? No. You just just once. Uh, but you just twenty five bucks, you get three records, and they're all bangers because it's fucking rod and easy, man. Um, and you they, should do it twice. They don't put out bad stuff, you know what I mean? So anyway, um, I'll do I'll do one. You do one, Steve. I'll make you bigger. So at McKay's, I was kind of digging around and came across um, this I guess it's, no it's not really a compilation it really features one artist but there's a bunch of artists with him uh, it's I don't have a lot of rap or beat records but this is yeah. world world famous beat junkies volume 2 from Whoa. 1998 I believe uh, featuring DJ Retmatic and there's there's a bunch of folks on here with huh. him including uh, uh, Moss Def and some other folks. Yeah. But uh, Moss Def is cool. great, man. Um, a lot of, some of it's rap. I'm not big into rap. I was kind of hoping to hear just a bunch of beats and stuff. But, um, you know, like I said, I don't have much of this. But, you know, I was like, well, I'll pick it up for a few bucks. So, kind of cool. Yeah, very cool. That was a uh, no, uh, uh, McKay's pickup? Yeah, yeah. Very cool. How many more you got, Steve? You want to do two? I'll do one more. Yeah, because I just got I got one more. Okay. Uh, this next one is a... What do you call this band? They call it like a... Butt a, Weasel? Not Butt Weasel so much. Okay. An indie folk band, indie fo indie folk rock band from I think they're from Michigan. Hmm. Uh, Lord Huron. This is Strange Tales oh. by Lord Huron. It came out in 2015, I believe. Um, I like it. it. It reminds me. His voice reminds me a little of Jim James from uh, My Morning Jacket. Has that kind of uh, just a ton of reverb, kind of airy sound cool picture of the band on the back bass players playing a double bass now were you familiar with these guys at all or did you just kind of stick a stab um, on these guys i wasn't i wasn't that familiar with them um i just knew they had a kind of a kind of a cool sound um kind of country yet like i said indie folk cool that's a good so have you listened to it all the way through not all the way through yet Listen to a couple of it's a double album. Listen to a couple of sides. Very cool. Was it pricey? Or that was Not used? Too, no, no, it was, I got it used. Sweet. Well, um, the one I'm, I've been the most excited to share, and it's, it's Steve, you know this record because we talked about it before, but you don't know I bought it. Oh, what's going on, DJ Trish? You know it's Friday night when you see you guys. You damn right. Woo! Let's go. Um, this is—I've been so excited to share. I, it's, you know, I picked up these four records. 
like I said, Jonathan delivered these on Saturday, and we listened to all of them last weekend. I, you know, normally I wait to open records like during for Dig of the Week, and you know, we all I stream them and we play them together. And it's like, yeah, fuck that. I'm not waiting a week. I'm I'm playing these records. So we listened to them all, but the the one I've been the most excited to uh, share with you guys is uh, is is this record. <laughs> <laughs> and it's I, I don't know why it makes me laugh because it's kind of corny but like also in the most terrific of ways um i know i'm sure most of you guys most of you guys are familiar with the uh, the numero group the numero group is a uh archivist label out of chicago that's been around for a good while and i know i know numero for releasing just these like terrific soul and funk uh and gospel albums that are like of bands that just and just didn't quite make it much in the way that rod easy is doing with a lot of these rock records and, the, and and numero has done it with the the rock records too uh they have they have a, a couple of records out i know they're like like hard and heavy 70s stuff that like just fell by the wayside they put them on this big compilation da 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 but Numero will we release stuff from like these micro scenes, you know, the, you know, I'm just making this up off the top of my head. The Cleveland, you know, gospel funk scene from the 70s and like a compilation of that kind of stuff. And that's what I know them from. And they do a great job. I knew they were awesome from back in the day when they kind of reached out to DJ Shadow to kind of help them curate what was important for like collections and like, you know, like. It would stuff they would run across in sheds and barns and he's the king of, he's the king of digging so that's the one you want to reach out to but anyway this popped up at a local shop and i, I listened to it a few times and then went up there to buy it one time and it was gone it's like oh damn and so during this uh, coronavirus crisis um was looking for stuff to order looking for new albums you know give a little money where I can and uh it was there and I'm like oh shit now's the time to pick this up this is uh Chasman Symptafugue do you remember this Steve no no <laughs> this is so awesome let me read you a little bit about this right here this record is from 1980 um hang on me was a from the blown out motherboard of West Philadelphia's master control programmers, Charles Grossman broke off to explore his own personal outer space experience with just a DW8000 to keep him company. University City's loneliest cyborg issued this eight song electric mellow, electro mellow statement in 1989. Spectral synths, pulsating programming, and yes, a guitar. <laughs> set the soundtrack to the next game of spy hunter jam on to a sound more sophisticated and i don't give a damn man this record is so freaking awesome it is michael, so michael cron says guitar sales are down this month come on <laughs> they won't be after you listen to this record i'm telling you this is so good man and it's so uh you know, I've been I've been really big into like a, a synth wave kind of vibe for a long time now. And this is not it's not synth wave, but it kind of tickles on that fancy area of synth wave and just like that, that electro stuff. Aaron wants to see if we can find his Facebook page and give him a call. If you find it, dude, we'll give him a call. Except he's probably in his 80s by now, so that's probably not a good idea. He he maybe I, I don't know if he's I don't know if he's with us anymore or not. Can we get a ruling? Judges? Can we get a ruling on the... Um, I don't... Uh, <laughs> card Sharks! Sorry, I just wanted to do that. I don't know if he's passed or not, dude. I got one more. Do it up, Steve. I'm hang, on, hang, on, hang on, let me make you bigger. That's what she said. Or he said, come on. It's 2020. Boom. Okay. All right, then. Uh, this one... The camera's out of focus. My camera's out of focus? 
You're all right. Uh, I'm on a delay over here, so right. I can't really You're see right. what, what, what I'm looking at. Um, this one I took a stab on, but just based on the cover itself. Okay. And it's called. Is anybody has anybody out there ever heard of a band called Mothership? Oh. Mothership. Cool cover on the front, but what really sold me is the artwork on the back of the, the trio. It's a power trio out of Dallas, Texas. Whoa. Um, I can best describe it as stoner rock. Uh, here's a little write-up. They, I think they probably wrote it up. Supersonic intergalactic heavy rock trio mothership based out of Dallas, Texas. Give a real sense of hope that all is well in the universe satisfies like a steaming hot stew of UFO <laughs> and Iron Maiden blended with the southern swagger of Molly Hatchet Whoa. and ZZ Top paired with a deadly chalice of Black Sabbath. Holy Lord. So it's got that 70s sound. Is this a new band? Uh, yeah, yeah, new band out of Dallas. Wow. This is from, this is from 2014. This is their second album okay. called Two. So it's only their... But really, really good. It looks really like the uh, the artwork looks like uh, what's the Conan guy? Fre- Freja, Freya, Fre- uh, Fre- no, Frank, Frank, Frizzetti, no. Frizzetti. not really like that. Frank Stallone, yeah. Jay says. That's the subject matter, yeah, but not the artworks, not that at all. Huh? What what label is that on, Steve? Uh, Ripple. I don't know Ripple. Ripple I mean, I, I know Ripple, but I don't know. <laughs> don't don't get it twisted. But my, my hair's doing that weird thing again. God damn it. I highly recommend you checking them out. They have a Bandcamp page. Okay. And totally, totally up your up your alley. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's our dig of the week. Sorry, I'm, fi- I'm fixing you back. Boom. Boom. So there's more of me in the shot. That's a good oh, idea. Oh, uh, Vance said he saw Mothership last year with Overkill. What'd you think of them live, Vance? Good band? That's pretty cool. Vance sees a lot of great shows, man. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Steve, we're going to do us a soda speak and chip chat. Where, where are you sitting on chips and soda? Uh, I'm sitting all right. I got a couple sodas left. Maybe... Uh... Three or four bags of chips left. Okay. Are 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 you, are you going to do something tonight? Or you... I could. I mean, it's up to you. I don't want to. Might as might as well. Um, Vance said they were great. Also, Death Angel was with them too. Holy Lord, Death Angel and them. Oh my 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 my! What a great show. So anyway, well, let's take us a quick break. I, I saw Mr. Bizarro. I miss Mr. Bizarro. Um, say something I missed. Hear the new uh, Brant Bjork, super cool shit, funky and stripped down like the. Oh yeah, yeah. I just heard a little bit of that Brant Bjork, but I, I want to hear the whole thing. I planned on streaming the whole thing, and then maybe ordering some stuff from there because I want some Brant Bjork in my life on vinyl for sure. For sure. Oh, Noble Records. Dylan said he's he's heard of them. Very fantastic. It's good stuff. I'm I'm stoked to check that out, Steve. I wish he's here to. Share that in the uh, our record earballs tonight. Yeah, I'm hiccuping. Sorry. All right, let's take us a uh, let's take us a quick break. We'll come back with the uh, so to speak and chip chat. We promise. And uh, we got to figure out what we're gonna do for chip chat here. You got a chip? We got options. We got options. All right. So uh, everybody, stay tuned, and we'll be right back here on a brand new. Grown Man Record Night. You guys stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. I swear to Christ, don't go anywhere. Now that Fred's retired and we're living on a fixed income, it's good to know there are some stores where I can always save money. One of them is Redco. <laughs> this senior citizen plan saves me an extra 10% over and above their low discount prices on prescriptions on all Redco brand products. After raising three children, we're entitled to live a little. And that extra 10% really helps. Can I give anybody a list? You need all the Repco you can get. 
I know a place. I know a place. Where life is good. Where life is good. A brand new place. A brand new place. In your neighborhood. Your neighborhood. Come to my place. Where dreams come true. Come true. My saving place can save a lot of dollars for you. My saving place. The new Solon Kmart will celebrate its grand opening starting Thursday. Hundreds of grand opening specials await you at this and all Cleveland. If you we are Pepsi free, caffeine free. I've got some good reasons for giving my family caffeine free, Pepsi free. <laughs> You're looking at two of them. We are Pepsi free. When mom bought this caffeine free cola, I said no way. Then I tasted it. We are Pepsi free. Pepsi Free's got great taste. Who needs anything else? And all that taste is caffeine free. Just taste it. We are Pepsi Free. Regular and diet. If you order a new Buick Regal by May 30th, equipped with chrome-plated wheels, custom air air conditioning, tilt wheel, freedom battery, lower body side molding, body side stripe, and bumper guards, You'll get sport mirrors, custom steering wheel, visor vanity mirror, protective side molding, door edge guards, electric clock, and a headlamp on indicator at no extra charge. Regal's 7 for 7 option offer. If you're thinking about a mid-size car and you're not thinking about a Buick Regal, maybe you'd better think again. Grown Man Record ought to be back in a minute. Stick around. We're back, and Steve's somewhere. There's your music back going. I think they they think I'm stopped listening every time. So anyway, Steve, I've had a tough time. I have to tell you, like uh, finding sodas for so to speak. Um, really? Well, it, it's it's just that I'm you know during this situation, I, I've ran. I didn't have a cache of sodas. And so I've only been going to a couple of supermarkets here. <clears throat> and like this week, for instance, um, I've not gone to any, any place. I bought two weeks worth of groceries last week for me and my, my parents. And so the idea, well, even beers, I didn't go to the store for beers. I'm beers from last week. So, and I was at Walmart. So the sodas, you know, we did the, the Sam's Cola last week, which is fantastic because of the description, if nothing else. But they just don't have a selection of sodas there. So I've been really at a loss. But I, I, Jay was uh, nice enough to grab something while he was out today. And I don't know if we've ever done this. I don't give a shit. Uh, it's just kind of what we're vibing on tonight is kind of the, kind of the deal. So I'll go ahead and do mine because yours is probably... You have a brand new soda that's been waiting in the wings? I, I think so. Okay, well, ours may not be brand new. So we're talking... We're talking the sun-kissed strawberry. I don't know if we've done this or not. We may not have done this. But this sounds, it sounds damn delicious. Um, it's quarter past one, time flies when you're watching Grown Man Record Night. Man. Whew. Time flies when your liver's dying a slow, painful death. Jay? Oh, that's good, man. It tastes like fresh straw. It, I, I expected it. Jay asked if it tastes like Jolly Ranchers. And that's a good description of what I would have expected this to taste like. I'll be honest. This tastes like fresh strawberries to me. I mean, it has a very, ironically enough, for something I'm sure is loaded in high fructose corn syrup. Um, but it really tastes like strawberry. I'm pretty happy with that. It's 
so much sugar. You say sun kissed? Yeah. Very sweet, but it's got that fresh strawberry taste. I just don't understand it. I think doesn't sun kiss now they have a grape and uh they've got a grape and a strawberry, whatever else they got. Well, orange is the OG sun kiss, but uh that's interesting. Caffeine free, so hoorah. Steve, mm. what you got working down that way? I can give you a little I'll give you a little bump up in screen size here. You want a little real estate? You know, that's sure. what I said, Michael Cron. He said mix it with a pop-off. Yeah, that's the first thing out of my mind was that right there, boom. Mm. So uh I got a uh another Fago. Okay. This is their uh I guess it's their uh Mountain Dew variant called Fago Moon Mist. That's my Fago jam right there. With a real <laughs> kick, it says. It's uh, on their website. It says, from a citrus spring located on the moon. <laughs> so, let's give this a whirl. About that Juggalo life. You'll, dude, you'll like this. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. My go-to... Like, Sheets would sell the 24-ounce bottles of Moon Mist and all of their Fagos for 99 cents. And I would get a Diet Moon Mist for 99 cents in a 24-ounce bottle. Yeah. It, I'd say it's not so much like Mountain Dew. It's got more of a lemony taste. Mm -hmm. It's got a nice lemon kick So to maybe it. more of a sun drop thing. Maybe so. Maybe more of a sun drop. Because you know sun drop tastes more Because we're like talking Moon Mist, sun drop. Hey, how about it? Oh, that may, oh, maybe that's what it is then. Where is Fago out of? I think they're out of Detroit, Michigan. Okay. You were lickety split on that information right there. Yeah, I was. How about that? That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty good. A couple of good sodas tonight. A couple of good like cheap sodas. I mean, you know, very this, cheap. Very these cheap. These are not glass bottle four dollars. You'll, you'll find you'll find Fago on the bottom shelf. Of, yeah, on sale all the time and Sunkissed, of course. You guys know I, I've always loved a Sunkissed uh, orange. That's probably I my. I believe Sunkissed is a PepsiCo product. Am I, am, I, am I mistaken there? It probably is now. If, if it's not, uh, was it? I think Sun. I remember. Is it a Sunkissed. Pepsi product, Jay? You're a Pepsi I remember, man. I remember the orange. The orange Sunkissed being a Pepsi product. Maybe a pro I can't read it because the. I think they may be independent, but distributed by different people in. Uh, Call it Cheerwine and A and W. Yeah, Ch uh, Cheerwine and A and W around here were distributed by like uh, same company with Sunkissed. Not to get into a whole beverage thing here, but uh, all right. Well, let, let's get into a chip chat now. How are you sitting on chips, Dave? Uh, like I said, I think I have like three bags left. Okay. We actually, I went from like. Um, wow, Aaron says they went to uh, went to the Fago website. They have over fifty flavors. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Insane, huh? Insane. It's insane, clown posse. There you go. Um. So I went from like not having anything for chip chat to uh, Jay bringing something last week, girlfriend bringing something, and I picked up a couple of things. So we actually have a little bit of a cache. I don't know. I didn't actually check the sheet, so I'm glad maybe you have something to supplement this because we, we may have done this. You may see this and say, yeah, 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 we've done this. I don't know. But uh, Jay picked up a late July. I know we've done some late July chips. Yeah, we have. Bacon habanero. Have we done this one? Don't know. I haven't checked the sheet. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember this. Now, let's see if, if we've got anything... Let me get you a little information here, folks. I don't like to leave anybody informationless. Um, we are obsessed with the amazingly delicious flavors served up at our favorite taco trucks. So we had them in mind as we created our classic, classico tortilla chips made with organic non-GMO whole ground corn each flavor was inspired by the sauces and peppers that are offered on the side with every order. We hope you find our classicals as 
Fantis Fantastico, as we, they don't say that. Fantastico? I don't care for that. Um, but late July, um, the other taco truck inspired flavors are jalapeno lime and nacho chipotle. I'm trying to see where, um, where the late July company is out of. Um, Probably Colorado. Distributed by late July snacks, Charlotte, North Carolina. Ho. Oh. Hello. Come on. You want me to turn my eyelids inside out? I don't, know if I, I, don't, I don't know if there's time for that. So I'm interested in these. This, this is a, this would be an ultimate flavor for me. I'll be honest with you. So there are tortilla chips. Tortilla. Tortilla. They're expensive. Jay, get you one of these. Um, the first, the first time we did late July, I got them at a Salvation Army um, store. <laughs> oh, that's right. I remember that. Yeah. These are um, they're they're a thick chip, but they seem brittle for as thick. I, I mean, in a good way, to right. where they, they're not going to break your teeth out or nothing. So let's try a little. More habanero a is my favorite pepper na- flavor. A natural chip is my my guess. I bet they don't have a lot of ingredients. It's very core, a very coarse flavor. So you're yeah. right, very natural, rough, roof hewn style uh, like coarse ground corn good flavor <clears throat> bacon is kind of fake but pronounced habanero nowhere near as hot as what you would think of course not not even close the purple bag of Doritos the, the sweet chili or whatever, way hotter. Spicy nacho Doritos, way hotter. Dinomitas, 10 times hotter. <laughs> These, but they're good. Don't get me wrong. And I love the fact that you can make something with some, ha- some habanero flavor that won't run you off. Because I think habanero is the best pepper flavor. I sure, would like to see a little more sweet. I'd like to see a little more heat in this. Mm. Aaron's got a phone number. Is it on here too, Aaron? 888-85-SNACK. Jay, give him a call. Of course, that won't be on the microphone. Hold up. Norwalk, Connecticut. I'll give him a call here. Here we go. If I, how, how do you dial a phone? Eight five. S N A C K. One ringy dingy. Thanks for calling late July snacks. For English, press one. You guys want to do English or? Uh... <laughs> I think the other. I think the other. Sorry one that we can't take your call right now. Our office is currently closed. We're excited to talk to you soon. We're normally here to talk with you any time between the hours of 9 a.m. <laughs> to think, 7 p.m. Eastern time. I think this time, bitch is trying to Monday fuck. Friday. If you're calling with a medical emergency. Please hang up and dial 911. If you have an urgent product concern, please call us anytime. Medical emergency. I got a chip stuck up my ass. You can also learn more about late July snacks, get the answers to some commonly asked questions, or send us an email via our Contact Us page by visiting www.latejuly.com. Thanks again for getting in touch. <laughs> I want the... She hung up on me. I want that sultry bitch's phone number that answered the phone, first of all. Second off... What medical emergency are we having here? <laughs> I'm at a loss. These are good chips. 
I'm, I'm at a little bit of a loss. I wanted to leave him a message. Some of them give you the option to leave it a message. I was gonna believe me. I was gonna leave a message. <laughs> I, I'd already come up a little. I'd already come up with a little 1:34 in the morning message for him. Uh, anyway, Steve, what you got? Uh, I've staying in the spicy column. Okay. I like columns. Um, I've got a chip from Barcel USA, which Barcel, I think they cater to the Hispanic market. I did some Barcells when I did the uh, Mexican grocery store that I did the. Uh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I may have gotten these from there. You may have done. Have you done these? Uh, what is it's it? their artisan style line of chips. They did like four. I don't or think they did so. Five. Speaking of the artisan lines, it's, according to their website, five masterpieces are the result of mixing unique top quality ingredients and artisan craftsmanship. Our thin cut potatoes provide crunch and crispiness like no other. A precise kettle cooking process guarantees a fantastic homemade flavor on all varieties. This is the artisan style. Hey, I'm gonna uh, give you some real estate here, Steve. I'm getting okay. my mouth sticky. Called Diabla. That means devil. Diabla. They really live up to their name, seasoned with a unique blend of chili and spices to give oh. you a red hot burst of flavor that will get you licking your fingers and sweating right from the start. Inappropriate. Oh. I don't like I don't like how that's worded. We'll see how they live up to that. I want to hear that bitch on the phone I was just talking to read what you just said. As a Very side note. Loaded with uh, looks like loaded Ooh. with some flavor. Come on sure. now. Sure. I may have held these a little long. A little stale? No, April 12th. I don't think so. Maybe they're supposed to taste like that. It's a kettle chip, but it's not really oily kettle-y. ton of flavor, though. But, Jesus, I'm not sweating and all that crap, so, yeah. It is a good chip, though. Okay. Where'd you pick these up at? I believe the Mexican grocer. Oh. They're a... The voice on their commercial is just sexy as hell. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's just real... It's a real sexy voice on their commercial. That's all I ever think about. That's pretty good, though. Hmm. Now, I, I kind of want some spicy stuff, man. Kind of a little bit of the loss. You kind of let me... Hey, tell me this, Steve. Is there a number on that potato chip bag? Mm. Surely there is. I don't see one. Oh, I'm upset. Barcel. It's a, it's a company of uh, Bimbo. Okay, that's... We don't need to. Is there a country code in front of the uh, number? No. They're manufactured in Texas. Get my bus. There's a questions or comments uh, number. Okay, one, there we go. 1-800. You you call it up. You me call it up. I'm not going to call it. I don't have anything to say because I didn't review it. <laughs> I would rev I would give him an actual review. But uh, I mean I can. What's the number? One. Uh huh. Eight hundred. www. Three five four. Three three seven two. That was what I was gonna say. I love, I love on that last one that they take the time to say www. That's a boss man pet peeve. I've I've watched him tell the biggest client in the world. This is not 1994. You don't need to say www anymore. And me, and me going. Uh, yeah. Okay. Calling Barcel USA. Consumer 
Consumer Relations Department. Our normal business same hours one? on Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. Eastern Time. If we are not answering your call right now, that is because we are on the other line with other consumers. If you do have an urgent issue, or if you require assistance assessing any part of our website due to a disability, please contact our answering service at 1-800- oh, There's a disability involved here. Otherwise, we ask that you leave your name, area code, and phone number, and the reason for your call. Thank you, and have a great day. Good evening. Uh, we're from the internet program, Grown Man Record Night. We do a uh, chip chat review segment. We have reviewed literally uh, over 650 bags of potato chips on our program over the past seven years. And we just finished reviewing your uh, artisan Diablo. Diablo chips. And we a very positive review on these chips. This is a very flavorful, uh, well-designed chip. And we just really appreciate what you guys are doing over there at Barcel. Keep up the good work, and uh, please keep Grown Man Record Night in mind. Hey, um, tell them mucho gusto. Mucho gusto. We appreciate you guys. Take care. There you go. Huh? I'm not leaving my number. <laughs> They'll call me back when I'm hungover. And yeah, nobody said what to do with it. That's what I should have said, Aaron. Hey, I'm calling with a medical emergency. What the fuck do I do, for Christ's sake? There's no instructions. There's literally no instructions what to do during a medical emergency. I am... Please. All right. I'm tired of this. I don't want to do this. I'm not doing this anymore tonight. I'm over it. Uh, let's let's get back to some uh, music albums. Let's talk about what we've played. <laughs> Let's let's talk about a random stack of records. I'm gonna pull, I'm, I'm gonna pull uh, S through T, and we're, let's just talk about them. No, let's go back over to Twitch, folks. I'm gonna play a couple of albums. Um, hey, if you were deserted on a on a okay. lonely lonely planet. All right, I'm sorry. We we will do this. Hang on, not yet, guys. Let me get out of this. You gonna play marbles? We're going to play marbles one more time before we leave. Oh. One more time. Random. Boom. Wait till we get in here before you do it, though. Uh. Oh, neat. It's the Plinko board. Exclamation point play. Exclamation point play. Exclamation point play. Uh. You guys say point or mark. I didn't type it right. Okay. Okay. Exclamation point or mark. This one looks interesting. Get in here. Giving you guys time. Exclamation point play. Get in here. Let's go. Come on. Come on, guys. Let's, let's get in here real quick now. Come on. I'm going to give you about 10 more seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Come on. Get in here. One exclamation come on, point DJ, play. Trish, three, get in there. two. Come on. Three, two. Come on. Give me one, three, come on. Six of us, let's do it. Three, two, one. All right, we're in. Then we're coming over to Twitch with some record albums. Oh. Oh, look at Aaron pulling out in front here. Up, 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 up. Oh, the curbist. Oh! Almost off the side. Oh, boom. Look at Vance pulling out front. Come on now. Whoa, who's the curbist way down? How the hell did you get down there? Doesn't matter because Vance is just taking control. Come on. Here we go. Nice, straight I'm on. control I'm on. line. I'm on like a 20 second delay. Nice controlled line. The curb is still moving forward here. Reckless. A little reckless play by Jay. But sometimes that pays off, folks. Sometimes that reckless play will pay off at marbles. Other times. Oh. Oh. 
Zephyro. That's Vance. Pulling out in front. I think Carbist, I think you hopped off the board. No, I think he's still in there. Is he? Look at Steve. What are you doing, Steve? Whoa, Carbist, number one. Right. How did you pop back up on top? I don't understand it. This All seems right. like a rigged affair All here. Right. All right. Straight and narrow. Oh, okay. well, that's, show. hey, that's... You put your head down, you just kind of grind it out. I mean, I'll I, I respect that. Man, it's kind of ran into some trouble. That's okay. That, look at there. Still, still running into some trouble. Momentum kind of stalled a little bit. Steve's tooling a little bit back here behind it. We got a little We got a little run for third and fourth here between Steve and Aaron. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on. Aaron's moving. Look at Aaron. Hmm. Damn it. Oh! Wow. Okay. That's a lot. That's a little better race, folks. That's a pretty sweet jump. That's that's a pretty. I, hey, that's that's better. That's better, guys. That last race, I'll be. I don't want. I don't want to get. We're all friends here. That's that's a bullshit. The last race, you guys put in oh, fuck. piss poor effort. This race was a little more, I think, I, th I think a little more up to what you guys are capable of. All right, let's get in here one time, guys. Our Father, it's art in heaven, say, hallowed be thy name. You're going to throw a prayer in there, aren't you? Maybe. Um, all right. Well, thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us. We've had a big, big old time here tonight, playing some record albums, talking about some nonsense. Uh, but seriously... Go over to the uh, Twitch channel. We're going to keep playing some records. And um, it don't cost you nothing. We'd really appreciate you dropping us a follow over there. If I can ever find the uh, graphic. Boom. That's where we do the uh, all the music streaming. And uh, when we do some gaming stuff also. So definitely drop us a follow. And you can choose whether or not to check us out when we go live. That way you know when we go live. You give us a, uh, give us a little follow over there. Appreciate you, Steve. Appreciate you, Vance. Aggressive night. Yeah, man. Thank you guys for joining us. You were on the can? Well, that's, we're, we're made for the can, Scott. Uh, <laughs> we're a shitty-ass show. We've been at 500 subscribers for like three fucking years. We're a shitty-ass show. What, what, what else you want here? <laughs> oh, medical emergency? Uh, dial... Um, uh, rescue 311. <laughs> Did you guys know 311 was an inside job? <laughs> we were born in the 70s. Uh, 888-85-SNACK. Let's get a tattoo. Somebody from Record Night, uh, get a little, uh, get a little tattoo there. All right. Done Go over there. I don't want to talk anymore. Shut up.